So once Audition opens up, this is the interface you'll see. One of the things you need to be aware of with Audition that might be a little bit different from what you would see in some other audio ed editing software is there's two main spaces that you can work. There's the waveform editor right up here and the multi-track. By default, it'll be in the multi-track. First off, you can kind of close this little help window that'll pop up. So right now we're looking at the multi-track editor, but if we were to switch over to the waveform, you'll see it's going to ask for us to, call, to give this a new name, call this demo, and you can now see what this looks like. If I were to switch over to multi-track, and it's going to ask you where you want to save this, and when you do this, right here you'll notice that it's going to ask where to save it. Adobe always wants to save this in this weird document section. This is not good because if you're using a laptop, it's going to take up additional space and it's going to be really difficult to find. So always click over here to browse and then navigate to the Your Name external drive, Time Arts, and in this case, we're going to put it in the audio demo. demo. So hit Choose. Now we've got that set up. Everything else, the template, the sample rate, that's all great. So hit OK. Let's take a quick look at the multi-track layout and then we'll get into editing. So the first thing we just saw are these two sections up here to switch between waveform and multi-track. Here you have a list of a few different tools you'll be using. The main ones we'll be using are the razor tool here. Down here is where all of your clips are going to be. We haven't created anything, so we just have this one demo.sesx, which is your project file. And once again, this project file is only going to basically tell Audition what samples you're using, what audio files you're using, how to set them up. It doesn't save those samples itself. Down here, you've got the media browser, which allows you to basically browse through and find your media. You also have your effects rack, your markers, and your properties. You can switch between those. Down here you have your history and if you're working with video you can watch your video file down here. Over in this section you can see that you're in the editor mode and we've got a few of these different things up here which we'll learn about in a minute. This is your timeline and these are set in layers much as you would have layers in uh, Photoshop or in Illustrator. And we can get into what all this stuff does. We can name our track. You can mute it, solo it, which basically means that only that track will play. Mute will turn everything off. And you can set this up to arm and record. This is your volume. This is your pan. We'll get down to this stuff with automation. If we go down here, you'll see your levels, which will happen. Let me just set this up so you can see. Now you can see that we've got levels happening here. If we come over here, you've got your essentials and your selection view. I actually don't like all of this additional space being taken up, so I'm going to set it from the default to edit audio to video, which you can see here gives us a lot more space on this side. So that's the basic interface. When we come back, we'll actually start talking about how to bring audio into this project.